Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Pop OS, System76's own Linux distro, has gained quite a lot of attention recently. One question that comes back often is, how does it compare with Ubuntu on which it's based? So let's take a look at the differences between the two. General stuff. Pop OS is made by System76, on top of the latest release of Ubuntu, which is itself built by Canonical and the Ubuntu community. Ubuntu has been around for ages, dating back to 2004, while Pop OS's first version released in 2017. Pop OS has been mainly created to run on System76 hardware, but they do offer it as an ISO, and it can obviously run on as many hardware configurations as Ubuntu can. Both distros offer a long-term support release and more up-to-date intermediary versions with shorter support time. Here I'll be comparing the very latest, Ubuntu 19.04 Disco Dingo and Pop OS 19.04. Installation Both distros use different installers. Ubuntu still rocks its Ubiquiti installer, which is robust and proven, and pretty fast. It offers a few options, such as partitioning the drive, enabling encryption, turning the Wi-Fi on to download and install updates right during the installation, as well as installing proprietary, non-free software such as codecs or even the stable NVIDIA drivers best suited to your hardware. User creation is done directly at installation, as well as the selection of language, keyboard or time zone. Ubuntu's installer is functional, if not very graphical, and it presents a few of the things you'll be able to do after the install through a few slides while you wait. Pop OS's installer is a whole new one, developed in conjunction with the Elementor OS team. The live ISO of Pop OS boots directly on the installer, but you can of course still use the system through GNOME. Pop OS asks you for the language, the keyboard layout, and then offers a few options to either erase the whole disk and install Pop OS, or to tweak its partition layout. Partitioning is actually done through Gparted, while Ubuntu's installer has its own integrated tool, which is probably a lot easier for newcomers. Once you selected the disk you want to install on, you'll get the choice to encrypt the drive, with encryption being made default. After that, the installation starts and you're left with a single image to watch as the installer does its thing. User account creation is handled after the machine reboots. Another main difference is that Pop OS ships two ISOs, one for Intel and AMD cards and another for Nvidia cards, which include the latest Nvidia drivers by default, so you have one less step to enable them after install. Also interesting to note is the fact that Pop OS will create a recovery partition, allowing you to reinstall or simply refresh your existing install while keeping all your user files. This is a great feature I wish other distros would incorporate. While both installers work well, I found Ubuntu's a bit more complete, since it handles partitioning. Pop OS's installer is a lot simpler though, and I like its approach to user creation better. It allows Pop OS to ask a few questions, such as enabling location services, or connecting the online accounts, things that are handled after you log into your session on Ubuntu. It seems to make more sense to ask these questions when you create your user, but in the end, Ubuntu does provide these options on its welcome screen. Look and feel. Pop OS and Ubuntu look very different, although both use GNOME. While Ubuntu adds a dock by default, Pop OS does not, opting for a pure GNOME experience. Both extensively theme the desktop, with Ubuntu using its nice Yaru theme and the Suru icons with orange highlights and black elements, and Pop OS is using its own theme with a yellowish accent color and charcoal title bars. Pop OS also uses very vivid icons with a cyan blue for the folders and other icons being closer to what GNOME 3.32 offers. I must say, both are visually striking, with Ubuntu's wallpaper using purple and orange to complement its GTK theme, and Pop OS using very bright colors all through the OS. I don't really know which one I prefer. While Pop OS is more novel to me in terms of appearance, I could see its very vivid theme being a bit tiring at the end of the day. Pop OS also has the ability to use a slim mode to shrink title bars a bit, and enable a dark mode by default, which can offset the very bright colors and make it a little bit less tiring for your eyes, if that's your thing. None of the distros offer to change the theme by default, you'll still have to install GNOME tweaks to do that. Software There are a few differences here. Pop OS ships with Firefox as its web browser, just like Ubuntu, but replaces Thunderbird with Geary, a lighter, simpler email client that fits a lot more nicely with a GNOME desktop. 
It includes LibreOffice, as well as most of the GNOME default apps. Calendar, Terminal, Settings, Document Viewer, Image Viewer, and all the like. Ubuntu ships with a bit more stuff than Pop! OS though, such as Cheese, and a few games like Mines, Mahjong, Solitaire, or even Rhythmbox to play music. Ubuntu does not ship with a photo library manager, opting to use an image viewer, while Ubuntu uses Shotwell. And Pop! OS does not have a music player either, or a VNC client. As a result, Pop! OS is a bit lighter after installation than Ubuntu, using 7GB of hard drive space, while Ubuntu uses 9GB. App Stores here is a big difference between the two distros. Ubuntu uses the GNOME software application, which is the standard on a lot of distros. It handles app installations, but not libraries. It can open individual .deb packages, though, and handle their installation. Pop! OS ships with the Pop! Shop, which is based on Elementary OS's App Center. While it does not include the elementary apps, unfortunately, it still retains the same general look and feel and organization. Its use of a top banner that stays the same all the time is not fantastic, but in general the app looks a lot smoother and nicer than its default GNOME counterpart. Pop! OS actually tweaked the App Center a bit to include a settings panel, allowing you to enable or disable repositories and updates and add your own repos. Neither distros ship with Flatpak support enabled, but both support PPAs. Ubuntu does ship with the Snap support enabled, while Pop! OS does not. Since the Pop Shop does not handle dev packages, Pop OS ships with Eddy, a simple elementary OS application to handle these kind of files. All in all, I think the Pop OS approach is a bit nicer looking here, with the Pop Shop looking smoother, allowing individual repo tweaking directly from the app when Ubuntu has a separate application dedicated to it. Repositories A nice software center is good, but what can it install? App selection is pretty much the same here, since Pop! OS's repos are based on Ubuntu's. Pop! OS enables all of Ubuntu's repos by default, apart from the source code, and this includes the restricted and multiverse repos. It also adds its own repositories, in the form of an apt proprietary repo including Steam, Spotify or VS Code, and a PPA, which includes Nvidia drivers, newer kernels, some GNOME patches and the Pop! OS wallpapers. Ubuntu, while it does enable the same repos by default, has its own way of shipping additional software, namely through the Snap Store, included directly in GNOME software. You'll find a bunch of applications there that aren't in Pop! OS's repos, such as Plex, OBS, Discord or Zenkit. By default, Ubuntu's app selection might be a bit larger thanks to the Snap Store, but this can be easily remedied with an install of Flatpak or Snap on Pop! OS, although these won't be integrated in the Pop Shop, which does not support these packaging formats yet. Flatpak support will be coming to the Elementary OS App Center in the future, so we can expect the Pop Shop to support it as well at some point. Performance In terms of measured performance, both used around the same CPU, but Ubuntu did use up a bunch more RAM by default, probably because of its larger application suite, using 2.3GB of my 16GB of RAM. Pop! OS used a little less than 2GB when idle, but it did seem more fluid when interacting with GNOME Shell, especially under load. Animations felt faster and more responsive, and opening apps also seemed snappier. It might be because Pop! OS ships with less stuff installed, but the experience, from a purely naked eye point of view, felt smoother. To conclude, there are a few differences between both distros. While Ubuntu ships with a bunch more tools and apps by default, making it a more complete experience out of the box, I really like what System76 has built here. Pop! OS is a vivid, beautiful desktop distro with a great installation experience, a good software center, and is a bit lighter in terms of resource usage. It will all come down to your look and feel preference in the end, and whether you want to have a bit more bleeding edge distro. If you want a more stable, more tested experience, albeit a less flashy and interesting one, Ubuntu will be a better choice. Now, if I speak from my perspective, I must admit trying out Pop! OS kinda made me want to replace Manjaro with it on my desktop. I'm not there yet, but the idea has been planted. I hope you guys enjoyed this comparison of Pop! OS and Ubuntu. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing or turning on notifications. If you really did like the video, I also have a Patreon page, I'll link it in the description below. Check it out to see which perks Patreon enjoy. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!